Okay, good morning and welcome to class everyone. Thank you for joining class. Hope all of you are doing well. Yes, Noah, are you ready to dive into Romans chapter 6? I hope all of you are enjoying the study of Romans chapter 6. Yes? Or is it too heavy for you all? I know, I know, Kung, yeah, three of you are joining because there's no power, yeah. Thank God you have internet connection at least in the Bible College. It's been having heavy rain uh, in uh, Bangalore City the last couple of days. Some places have been uh, fully covered with water. Uh, so, okay, the mic is not working, okay. So we're having an electricity problem in the Bible College. Thank God we were doing it from home, so it's not a problem. Okay, we'll uh, begin. Can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Thank you, Kung. <laughs> yeah, can one of you please lead us in prayer? Anyone? All right, I'll pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. I will bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration because you are good to us. Thank you for the opportunity you've given unto us to be gathered here to hear your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you give us the gift here and the heart for God to receive your word. I commit everyone onto your hand and I commit the staff onto your hand that the words that you speak of will not be words from men, but words from the throne of God. I pray that at the end of this class, we will have every reason in God to glorify your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because we know that your name is glorified at the end of this class. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Harrison. Okay, so last week we looked at uh, chapter 5 uh, where we saw, you know, uh, Paul laying the truth of our identification. Uh, he basically, in chapter 5, he's talking about the whole truth about our identification, who we are. He says, in Adam, uh, you know, um, because we are coming from the race of Adam, he call, whom he calls as the first Adam, the first man, the natural man, uh, the man of the earth. Uh, he says, you know, because of uh, Adam, we have inherited sin. And because of uh, uh, sin, the result of sin is death. And between sin and that, you know, everything else came uh, because as a result of the consequences of sin, he says we become enemies of God. Oh, he says we are without strength, we are weak, uh, we are condemned, we face the wrath of God, uh, eternal judgment, which is hell. Uh, and all of this as a result of being part of um, uh, Adam, who he refers to as the first Adam, the first man, uh, the natural man or the man of the earth. And in contrast, he says, you know, those of them who have uh, believed in Jesus Christ will receive righteousness by faith, uh, through grace, by faith. He says in Christ, uh, who he refers to as Christ as the last Adam, uh, the second man, uh, the spiritual man, the man from heaven, he says, because of Christ and what he did on the cross, you know, each one of us have inherited peace with God, we've uh, inherited, uh, we've received the gift of righteousness, we are justified, we are made righteous, uh, we have received the abundance of his grace, the right standing in grace, uh, we are saved from the wrath of God, uh, we receive uh, or we have eternal hope, we experience the love of God, we have the life of God in us, uh, we reign in life uh, over every demonic oppression, over every challenge, over every situation that we face. And then he also says that we bear the image 
or the nature of Christ in us, or we bear the image of the heavenly man uh, in us. So these are the wonderful benefits that we have, uh, those have inherited uh, who have put their faith in Christ or who are in um, Christ. And then, you know, we looked at chapter six, uh, where, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, in chapter 6, he's, Paul is bringing uh, us to an in-depth or a very deeper understanding of the truth of identification. Yes, he's given us uh, some of the truths of identification that he presented to us in chapter 5, which I just mentioned. But, you know, he's taking us into a deeper understanding of the truth of identification in chapter 6, which he's already introduced for us in Romans chapter uh, 5. Okay, so he's saying, you know, in chapter 6, all we have received as our identification in Christ, all this is good. But, you know, he's saying, let's take a deeper understanding or a deeper look uh, into our the truth about our ident identification uh, with Christ. And he says that because of Adam's sin, you know, we all have inherited sin. Uh, and as a result of that, you know, death and everything else. But in Romans chapter 6, he says that we have been not only been forgiven of our sins, but we've also been set free. We have been delivered from sin. Uh, so we don't have to be slaves of sin anymore. And then he goes on to explain to us how that happened. Okay. And he also explains to us, uh, you know, what does it mean to us and how does it affect our uh, lives. He, uh, after he explains how uh, this has happened to us, how we are free from sin, how we are totally delivered from sin, that we are slaves no more to sin, he goes on to explain how it affects our lives. So he transitions to Christian living. Uh, how do we live in the view of the cross and what Christ has done for us on the cross, what he's purchased for us on the cross and what has happened at the cross okay and then we began looking at uh, chapter six we looked at verses one two and three and um, you know in this chapter we said basically he's asking two main questions uh and uh, you know he has two follow-up uh, questions for that one main question we looked at the first main question uh, towards the end of uh, the last class on friday the first question paul asks is in verse one, uh, which he uh, kind of knows his, you know, his readers or the Jews will be questioning or asking, uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yes, we have, uh, you know, received forgiveness of sins. We have, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, received righteousness by grace through faith. Um, you know, uh, so can uh, we continue sinning because, you know, grace abounds? And uh, uh, what is uh, Paul's answer to that? We saw in verse um, 2, what does he say? God forbid. Yeah, he says, no, you know, uh, uh, he says, no ways, you know, we, we cannot, certainly not, he says, okay. And why does he say that we cannot continue to sin, even though grace abounds? Why does he say no? Because we have a new nature in Christ Jesus. We no longer okay. into habitually sinning due to the nature of Christ we have now and his identity okay thank you yes we have uh, uh, a new nature we have a new identity um, what does he say in verse um, 2 you know it says how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it okay so Paul is saying that no we cannot sin any longer certainly not why because he says we have been dead to Okay, I like the way he uh, uh, puts it across. He says, you know, we have been um, uh, dead to um, sin, okay? And dead people do not sin. Dead people cannot sin because they are dead, okay? Uh, so, you know, the people can ask Paul this question. Now, wait a minute, Paul. I mean, uh, we know that we have been forgiven of sins, but when did 
we die to sin. Okay, so that can be a question that will pop up in their minds. Okay, we know that we've been forgiven to sins, but we've never heard this, that we are dead to sin. When did we ever die to sin? And, uh, you know, Paul very beautifully just mentions in verse 3, uh, he says that we are, when we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized into his death. That's when we are dead to sin. So beautiful. You know, uh, I mean, it's so amazing, the, uh, you know, the revelations uh, the Holy Spirit is giving to this man Paul and how he's just writing it so logically, so beautifully, uh, so in-depth. Uh, and he says that we have been baptized into Christ's death, and that is when uh, we are dead to sin. So what is the baptism he's referring to here? Uh, we looked at it last uh, Friday. What is the baptism? Yes, it's a thank you, Kung. It's the spiritual uh, baptism. Okay. Uh, so he's referring here uh, to spiritual baptism because he says we have been baptized into Christ. Okay. Now uh, to be to we need to understand. Uh, you know, we need to understand the language of the author. Uh, what would he mean? Uh, by being baptized into Christ. And so we need to look at where else he has written about this. And we looked at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 13. Okay, and uh, we tried to understand it uh, from that context. And we saw that, uh, and I explained to you uh, uh, in detail about 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, where it says, uh, the Holy Spirit baptized us into the body of uh Christ. Okay, so yes, water baptism is a physical expression of a spiritual reality, uh, and what he's focusing here is on the spiritual truth. The spiritual truth is that all of us believers have been baptized into Christ. We have been brought into Christ. We are immersed into Christ. We are put into Christ, and we are clothed into Christ. So when we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized into His death. Uh, we now identify with Christ. Um, Death. And this is a powerful expression or proclamation of the spiritual truth of our identification with Christ's death, not only with his death, but we'll also see his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his seating at uh, uh, the right hand of the Father. Okay, so um, we'll move on to verse um, uh, four, we look at verses one, two, and three. I just explained it again. Uh, we look at cha uh, chapter six, verses four and five. So, can somebody please read verses four and five, please? Anyone would like to read verses four and five, please? Uh, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Uh, verse 5 also, Tarun. Okay. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Thank you. Okay, so here Paul is saying, not only have we been baptized or immersed into Christ's death, but since we are part of his death, we are also buried with him. When Christ was buried, we were also buried with him. And he says, through baptism into death means that we are baptized into his death. Not only are we buried with him, Okay, but just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, which means he was resurrected, so we are also resurrected with him. So not only did we die with him, we are also buried with him. Not only do, did we die and not only are we buried with him, but we are also have been resurrected with him. Him And it says that Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the 
father. Now, if we look at Romans chapter 8, verse 11, which we will study in a few weeks, we know that Christ was raised by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Now, um, here Christ was raised by the dead, by the glow from the dead, by the glory of the Father. Now, the Greek word we all know for glory is doxa. Uh, which is basically refers to the nature and the works of God uh, revealed to us. So it's a manifestation of who God is and what he does. So the glory of God basically means the manifestation of who God is and what he does. It's a demonstration of his power. So we understand that the spirit of God you know, causes the glory of the Father to be revealed even as Christ was resurrected from the dead. So here Paul is presenting a very interesting truth. He says we have not only received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, but we have received something more that has happened. Uh, we are also baptized into Christ. That means we ident identify with him spiritually. And because we identify with him spiritually, we identify with his death, his burial, and his uh, resurrection. Okay. What Christ did 2,000 years back, you know, even though it was 2,000 years back, but now it has meaning or it has implication for our life today. So, how does it have meaning or implication for us today? How does it matter to you and me today? This is what he's going to be explaining uh, in um, in verse uh, uh, in verse uh, four and in verse five following. Okay, so he says one of it is we should walk in newness of life. So our resurrection is telling us that you know we are to walk in the newness of life and the greek word for life here is zoe z o e zoe which uh, the greek word is zoe which means the newness of god kind of life uh, you know, it's talking about the abundant life, the fullness of life, the God kind of life, the eternal life. And so he's saying that, you know, uh, even as uh, we identify ourselves in Christ, you know, spiritually we identify with his death, with his burial and with his resurrection. And uh, he says, you know, um, because we identify with his resurrection, you know, with death, burial, and resurrection, we also should walk in newness of life, which means that we now have the God kind of life. We are now living in the abundant life of God um, and uh, God's life and God's nature is flowing in and through us. Okay. And verse 5, he says, For we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So he says, we died with him, but also raised with him. Okay, so the whole thing is death, burial, and resurrection. We are with him. We identify with him. We are united together which means we are identified with Christ, which means when Christ died, we died. When uh, he was buried, we were buried. When he rose again, you know, we rose again also. So in uh, Romans chapter 6, he does not uh, mention about, you know, uh, Christ ascending and him being seated at the right hand of the Father. But when we read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, that you know Christ raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we have been raised up together with Christ and ha we have been made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Okay, because we are in Christ Jesus. Because we are in Christ Jesus, we are raised up together with him and we are seated together with him at the right hand of the Father. So this verse says that we are, uh, you know, not only united with him in his death, burial, resurrection, but also united with him in his ascension. Uh, it's not mentioned in Romans 6, but we read this in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Uh, when Christ ascended, we also ascended. That means we ascended spiritually um, 
which means that you know uh, the system of this world has no more control over a believer why because the believer has been taken out of this world now when we talk about all of these things we're actually talking about it spiritually okay so spirit we are still living in this world physically but spiritually you know as believers we've been taken out of this uh, world uh, if we look at ephesians chapter 2 um, verses 1 and 2 can somebody read that please ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 we'll just um, move a little to ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 we'll just uh, dwell on that and then we'll come back to romans chapter 6 and we'll continue okay in the light of what we are studying so ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 2 can somebody read that please And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Thank you, Tarun. So some of these points which I'm mentioning are not there in your notes. So you'd like to just follow your notes. And if you want to make your notes, you can own notes, you can do so. So this first tells us that there is a system in this world, a system of disobedience and rebellion at work in the world. So the people of this world are under the prince of the power of the air. And we referred this to as a system of evil, of disobedience, of rebellion. And uh, but you and I are not under that influence because we have been raised up with Jesus Christ. We have ascended, uh, you know, as he has ascended uh, to heaven. So we live in a world where, um, you know, there's spiritual darkness, there's evil, there's corruption, uh, there is moral degradation, uh, but that cannot or should not uh, and you know should not and cannot influence a believer why because we have been raised up with christ jesus we've been raised up with jesus spiritually we've been taken out of this world we have been taken out of the influence of darkness evil corruption and moral uh, degradation and hence we actually are at the point where we can dominate um, the situations the challenges um, uh, uh, in this world, the darkness uh, around us that dominates and, you know, uh, the challenges, the difficulties and the darkness and the evil that comes against us, we uh, are not to feel overwhelmed by it. We are not to give in to it in fear, but we are in a place where we can dominate uh, those things. Also because, you know, we have our positional authority. God has given us the authority, the keys of the authority of the kingdom of God. He has given us the authority. We are in a we have positional authority because we are heirs of God. We are co-heirs with Christ Jesus. And from that position, from that authority, and because, you know, we identify in Christ, we identify with his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, you know, the things of this world cannot dominate it, uh, us. We are above these things. So we speak to these things. We speak uh, from the spiritual into the natural because we belong um, to a spiritual kingdom. The kingdom of God, uh, we know, is two dimensions. It has a spiritual dimension, the natural dimension. And we are at present, we are in the spiritual dimension because the kingdom of God is in us. We will see the natural dimension when, um, when Jesus comes again on this earth. So the kingdom of God, in us, which is spiritual, will influence, should influence our lives, our, um, uh, our surroundings, our environment, our geographical areas, and whatever comes uh, against us. So uh, we can dominate this world and not let the darkness, the evil, the, uh, the forces of evil and demonic oppression uh, to come against us and dominate us. We are the light. We are more powerful than the darkness. And... Uh, you know, most of us uh, believers don't know this, and uh, hence they're living under the dominion of darkness. But, you know, uh, we know this truth, and we need to um, live uh, above that. We need to live with the authority that God has um, given to us. Okay, so we see here that uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 that we read, you know, it says that not only have we been raised up together, but God has made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are also 
uh, united or identify with Christ in his exaltation. We identify with Christ in his death, his burial, uh, his resurrection, his ascension, and also in his exaltation. When Christ was made to sit at the right hand of the Father, you and I are also made to sit at the right hand of the Father. We are placed in the place of the highest authority. Okay, God could not place you and me in any other higher place. This is the highest place. No, we are seated with Christ. This is our place of authority and dominion in the spiritual realm uh, and uh, on this earth, even as we are physically living on this earth, you know, we need to operate from this place of authority. So when we operate from this place of authority, you know, we can confront uh, any demonic powers or any challenges that come in our life. We can speak to the storm, just like when Jesus, you know, when uh, he faced the storm, uh, he did not, uh, when the disciples woke him up, he did not say, Father, what do I do? Okay, he knew the authority that he had. He just spoke to the storm and he commanded the waves and the wind to die down and it, it just died down. He spoke to sicknesses. He spoke to demons and uh, he just spoke the word and uh, he saw sickness bow its knees. He saw demons uh, flee and that is the authority that he has uh, given to us. He says, in my name, you will cast out demons. So in the name of Jesus, we have the authority. Uh, we represent him. We stand in his place and we decree or we speak okay and uh, and why can we do this because we are seated with christ in heavenly uh, places okay now we need to remember that we are not striving for authority we are not uh, but we are exerting our authority we are not striving which means we don't have to fast and pray and uh, you know beat up our bodies and uh, you know all of that those things no i mean uh, you know these spiritual disciplines are important i'm not against it but what i'm saying is you know uh, that these disciplines is important for us to keep because uh, these disciplines uh, you know help us uh, uh, to maintain a good spiritual condition uh, so that we are fit to you know be used by god or and even to use what god has given to us but we don't strive for this authority this has already been given to us. The keys of the kingdom have been given to us. Um, God has given to us because it's by grace that we have received it. But only thing what we need to know is that we have to exert this authority. So we are in the place of authority. We exert this authority by faith, not in pride, not bossing over others, but in faith in God and using the word of God and by using the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So in all of these, coming back to Romans 6 now, in all of these stages, you know, whether it is in his death, his burial, his um, resurrection, ascension, and him seated at the right hand of the Father, we are also united uh, with him. We are united means we, united, united together means we identify with him. So what does it mean to us today? How does it affect our lives today? And Paul is going on to explain that. Um, now we need to remember what he started out with. Remember he started out with the question, uh, should we continue to live in sin? And he says we are dead to sin. And now he's going on to explain how this happens. In order to explain this to us, he's introducing us to a truth of being united together, being identified with Christ in his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seated at the right hand of the Father. And he's going to explain to us bit by bit how this affects us by being free from uh, sin. Okay. So now having understood this truth, yes, Christopher, Yes, Pastor. I just wanted to uh, ask a question with regards to this, you know, uh, living in the natural, living in the in the in the, in the supernatural or in the spiritual. Um, uh, for many, for for many believers, I think there is there is there is there is I think a a, a phase of you know getting to that, getting getting to stay where you live completely in in so in the supernatural or in the spiritual. So. Um, Although we we believe in all the all the all the truths, 
uh, and you know we know that the, we aspire towards that you know that's that uh, uh, that that spiritual uh, state or that spiritual uh, state of you know living living in that uh, in that realm um just wanted to understand uh, you know how uh, you know how believer i mean they, they would i mean the question i guess is there would be uh, i mean it's a process basically right to get to that get to that i uh, get to that stage um it's not really uh, you know i mean in the in that process it's not like you know it's either or it, it's like um, there is uh there is a process where you know we are we are not you know not reach that particular you know stay that particular state so just wanted to get some clarification on that yeah thank you thank you christopher yes um, uh, i think that's so true that's why paul begins was six by saying knowing this you know many believers don't know this truth uh they're ignorant of this truth and he says you know uh we need to have a spiritual understanding so the basic way we know it is you know uh of course you know when we are born again we are born again in our spirit man that's why we say uh, all of these things are spiritual okay but we need to renew our minds we need to be renewed and it, the bible very clearly says daily we need to be renewed in our minds you know, uh, we need to crucify the flesh daily. We have to take up our cross daily and, uh, you know, follow the Lord. So uh, this is something that we need to do on a constant day-to-day uh, -day basis because um, we tend so much to, you know, sometimes to, uh, uh, to think uh, uh, from, you know, uh, uh, in the context of this world. But, you know, we we also need to come to a place where we are thinking, kingdom thinking. You know, we are living kingdom culture. We are king, living kingdom lifestyle. Uh, and for us to do that, we have to consciously train our minds. We need to consciously train our spirits to, um, to think. So, you know, okay, when we are facing a, a natural situation because we're living in a natural world, we can think logically, okay, what is the solution for this problem? But we can say, hey, wait a minute, you know, uh, I don't belong to this world, actually. You know, I am a kingdom citizen. Um, so how can I bring in, uh, you know, um, kingdom authority into the situation? What can I do? And that's what we see Jesus also doing at all times. You know, uh, you know, he operates, uh, he brings in the spiritual to the natural because he's constantly operating in that mindset. So I think we need to develop that that mindset. And once we keep developing that mindset and flowing and not oscillating between the the spirit and the and the carnal man, uh, you know, uh, the more we feed the spirit man, uh, the more uh, we are operating in the spirit man. The more we are feeding the carnal man, that's just taking dominion or dominates, and you know, uh, that is what we are flowing in. So it depends what we are feeding, who we are feeding. Are you feeding your spirit man? Or are you feeding your carnal man? I have you time to spend time with God, reading His Word and um, the truths of god's word that you're living out uh, uh the quicker and faster you will be trained in that so it 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 won't be a difficulty because you will automatically live think, speak uh kingdom behavior kingdom thinking kingdom patterns kingdom culture and kingdom lifestyle yeah but for us to do it we need to constantly be uh, in tune with god's word but, and you know, meditate on God's word and fill our hearts and minds with God's word, and God's word will rule and reign over our logical thinking and our logical minds. Does that help, uh, Christopher? Oh, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll move on. So, um, so ha Paul, having helped us understand this truth of identification in Romans chapter 5 and 6, he goes on to say, What uh, to do? Uh, what do you do with it? How do you live it out? Um, now, his primary interest here is dealing with sin uh, and how do we live this truth with respect to the aspect of sin. So this is his primary focus. And uh, he says, we identify with Christ 
but how can we identify or how can we live in holiness? So in Romans chapter 6, verse 7, and most part of 8, um, you know, sorry, Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 7, and Romans chapter, most of Romans chapter 8, he's answering this question um, that we are in Christ, we identify with him now, but how do we live holy lives? How do we overcome sin? Okay, so we'll uh, look at how we do that in um, uh, in the latter half of Romans chapter 6 and we'll go on to chapter 7 and half of chapter 8 where we'll be focusing on this. So can somebody read Romans chapter 6 verses 6 and 7 please? Anyone? Romans 6, 6 and 7? Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who, di who has died has been freed from sin. Thank you, Tarun. So here he's talking about the old man and the new man. Okay, old man versus a new man. Uh, the old man refers to the old sinful nature, the Adamic nature, the unsaved human spirit. And he says that uh, the old man came through Adam and the new man came through Jesus. Um, when we say Jesus was the last Adam, uh, you know, we understand it because in Jesus, the old man comes to an end and in Jesus starts the new man. So that's why we say we are a new creation in Christ. When we say, you know, Jesus is the second man, we're talking about a new race. The first man is the old race. The second man's a new race. We say last Adam, we're saying that in Jesus, the old man comes to an end and it starts, uh, it's the beginning of the new man, which we are talking about the new creation in Christ. So in, co in contrast, um, uh, the new man is referring to the divine nature of God in us, that uh, uh, which is created in the image of God in, uh, in, in true or utter righteousness and in true uh, holiness. So the old man is the old sinful nature uh, which has the inclination to sin and what is Paul saying about this old man uh, or what happened to this old man? Paul is saying it was crucified with Christ. So when we are dead uh, in, in Christ, when we identify with his death, he's saying, uh, you know, we are... Um, our old man is crucified in Christ. So when Christ was crucified, you and I were also crucified. Our old man was crucified. So which part of us was crucified? It was the old man that was crucified. Uh, the old man was crucified, was put to death, which means that it's the end of it. Okay. Uh, the old man is no longer alive. So as a believer, you and I don't have the old man we have the new man which comes because of our faith in jesus christ so there is no longer the sinful nature in your spirit because your spirit man is born again so in your uh, in your spirit man there is no longer the sinful uh, nature but just like i said the mind has to be made new so it can think differently and the body has to be crucified. Uh, why? Because the body would still like to behave like the old man, follow the old patterns, the old uh, ways of doing things. But it has to be retrained to live according to the new man, which Paul will explain to us in the rest of these verses in, uh, uh, in this chapter in Romans 6. But um, we need to understand this, that in our spirit, uh, man, you know, there's the uh, there's no more the old man that is operating, but it is the new man. And in verse six, he says, knowing this, that our old man was crucified. We need to um, know this. Okay, so many people don't know about this, but you know, uh, we need to um, know about this. And he says, the old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with and we should no longer be slaves of uh, sin. 
Okay, and here he's talking about the body of sin. Um, uh, you know, the body of sin basically represents the sum totality of sin, the sum total of sin that is in us, the power of sin. Uh, he's saying that the sum totality of sin, the power of sin might be done away with. Now, the body in the New Testament is spoken in different ways, can refer to the physical body, the carnal nature, the fleshly desires. It can also represent the body of Christ that represents all the believers uh, the, as one body in Christ. Or it can also refer to as a sum totality of something or it can uh, it also means a full measure of something. So that is the way it is used here in this context. It's talking about the sum totality of sin or the power of sin. And he's saying that the that the body of sin might be done away with. So he's saying that the sum totality of sin uh, was done away with. Uh, it has gotten rid of uh, so that we are no longer slaves of sin. And now uh, this verse, verse 6 is so powerful, this truth, that as believers, you know, we are no longer a slave of sin. Why are we no longer a slave of sin? It's because the old man was crucified. We are dead to sin. The totality of sin was taken out of our life. So when you and I died with Christ on the cross. This is what happened. You know, we died to sin. The old man was crucified. The sum totality of sin was taken out of our lives. So as a believer, we are no longer a slave of sin because the sum totality of sin was done away with. Uh, so he says in verse 7, For he who has died has been freed from sin. Okay, so he says, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, let's think about this in the natural. Okay, for example, uh, just say, for example, you know, um, uh, a drunkard, you know, all his life, uh, he just has been drinking, he loves to drink, he's always thinking about uh, drinks, he's always thinking about when to get his next drink, where to get it from, how to get it from. And now just say this drunkard dies. Okay, uh, now when he's uh, dead, you know, we can keep along, I mean, keep around his coffin the best alcohol, all the alcohol that is the best kind around his coffin. But uh, will he get up and drink? No, he can't get up and drink. You know, it's quite obvious he's dead. He can't get up and drink because he's dead and he's dead to sin and he's free from sin. So that's what Paul is saying in, in verse 6 and 7. He's saying that the old man is dead, which means the sum totality of sin uh, that is controlling us is dead, dead. And therefore he says we are free from sin. So this is what took place on the cross. So when Christ died on the cross, we died with him. Our old man was crucified. The power of sin of our lives was broken so that we are free uh, from sin. And this happened 2,000 years back. But today, since we identify with him spiritually, we also identify with him what happened 2,000 years back. So the truth is that we are dead in uh, to sin in Christ. We are crucified in Christ. The power of sin over our life is broken. And this is real. This It comes to us spiritually. This is spiritual truth that you and I can walk in the spiritual truth today. So today you and I can say that the old man was crucified with Christ and the body of sin was destroyed. The power of sin is destroyed in my body. So you can keep telling yourself, you know, even as you face um, certain weaknesses, certain challenges, and uh, sometimes you feel upset, you know, why did I get angry again? I'm trying to control my anger, or, uh, you know, why did I lie? I'm trying to stop lying, or uh, why did I, uh, you know, uh, behave so rude or arrogant? I'm trying to overcome that. Uh, you know, we need to consciously tell ourselves that you know, the power of sin is broken over our lives, and we need to use our authority. And in Jesus' name, you know, break and bind um, those strongholds and that um, that sin in our um, body and say that it's totally destroyed, that I'm not going to go back into my own way. So the power of sin was destroyed 
uh, you and I are no longer slaves of sin. We are dead to sin. We are free from sin. And uh, we can say this uh, because spiritually this is ours in uh, Christ. Now, the devil may, you know, want us to think that we are still subject to these things. The devil does not want us to know these truths in some. That's why he hides these truths from us. But it's we need to make a conscious effort, you know, to constantly keep seeing the truth, believing the truth, knowing the truth. And uh, these things we are learning here, what Paul is writing to us, are very powerful truths. And, you know, if we know these truths, we can resist what the devil puts uh, on our lives or puts in the life of believer uh, that, you know, it's okay for us to sin because grace of God abounds in our lives. And we can say, no, you know, devil, we can't sin, even though we have the grace of God, because I am dead to sin. Okay. We'll move on. Verses uh, 8 and 9. Um, oh, can somebody read verse 8, please? Eight, uh, verse 8, 9. Can somebody read that? Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Thank you. So here we see that Christ died and rose again. And the story just does not end with uh, his crucifixion. But it says he died and rose again. We believe that uh, also he rose again. We also believe that we have been united together with him, not only his death, but, uh, you know, as Paul has already told us uh, in verse 4 and 5, we also believe that we have been united together with him in his burial. We also believe that we have been united together with him in his resurrection. And we also live with him. So Paul says, you know, uh, Everything else is the truth. Not only does we have been dead with Christ, but also the rest of it, what I just mentioned, is also the truth. That when Christ was raised up, death had no more control over him. In the same way, you know, uh, when we died and rose up in Christ, you know, the past things, the past way of life, the past nature, the past um, sinful passions, indulgence, uh, you know, we have to put behind because they have no more control over our um, lives. Now, what does this mean? Uh, you know, in verse 4, uh, we know that, um, uh, that just as Christ was raised back to life by the glory of the Father, uh, we also walk in the newness of life. Now, to be resurrected with Christ means that we are raised to walk in the newness of uh, life. Okay, so when Christ was buried, uh, we were also buried. Now, what does that mean? It means an end to the old man. Okay, the old man does not have any more claims on that person. Okay, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, just say for an example, a man has huge debts and he's not been able to pay up his debts. And because of his, uh, because of these huge debts and he's not being able to pay it up, you know, people have put court cases against him. Okay. Now, suddenly the man dies, poor man dies because, you know, of the stress and the pressure and uh, of paying or paying the debts and the court cases and everything. Just say the, the man dies and the man is dead and he's buried. And once he's dead and buried, this world has no more claims on him. Okay, no one can come and say, hey, wake up, you know, pay back my money. You haven't yet given me my thousand rupees or my the lakhs of rupees or the million dollars that you've taken from me. You have to repay it. Nobody can go to his grave and wake him, try to wake him up and say, hey, man, pay, pay me back. Or, you know, if... Um, the court case that is against him, you know, the hearing is there and no one can go and wake him up and say, hey man, wake up, you have to attend the court case. No, they can't do it because it's over. Okay, the man has dead and he's buried, which signifies a complete transition. Okay, he's no more has any claims of this world on his life. In the same way, you know, when we are we're dead in Christ, we're crucified with Christ, when we're dead with Christ, when we're buried with him, the old life has no more uh, claims on us. We have been released from the old way, completely free from the old, the old um, way of life, the 
old way of living life, the old claims of uh, life has no more hold on us. So Paul is saying when Christ was buried, we were buried with him and the old life has no claim on us. And he says when we were raised up from the dead, just as Christ was raised up, we can walk in newness of life. That means resurrection brings in newness of life. So just uh, to end this whole thing, you know, so beautiful, it, Paul is saying, in crucifixion, the, it is the end of the old man. It's the breaking of the power of sin. In the burial, he's saying it's the end of the old life, which means that the old life has no more claims over us, no more claims on us by the old life. And when we resurrected, he says, we are given a brand new life. We are living in the eternal life here and now. So powerful, so wonderful. I'll just repeat that again. When Paul is saying, you know, when you're crucified in Christ, we're dead in Christ, he's saying the, that's the end of the old man. It's a breaking of the power of sin. And when he says, you know, we were buried with Christ, it is the end of the old life. That's the old life has no more claims on us. The world has no more claims on us. He says, when you're resurrected, you know, we are given a brand new life. We are living in the eternal life here and now. Okay, isn't that so wonderful, so powerful, um, these truths? So I'd like you to just, uh, you know, uh, yes, hallelujah, amen. Thank you, uh, God, for what, uh, what you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've provided for us. i just like you to, you know, read Romans, just soak in these truths, let these truths not just become something that you've heard in class, but these are important, powerful truths which the enemy can uh, rob away from us. We can either be that seed which falls on the roadside, which, you know, has not taken root, the birds of the air will come and eat it, that is, the enemy will come and snatch it away, or you can be like um, the seed that falls among the 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 rocks that has no deep rooting and hence it died away uh, can be like the seed that falls among thorns that you know is choked by the things of this world you're so busy with the chores of this world your work and everything no time to read god's word but uh, if you want to be that seed that produces fruit to live in the spiritual truth and uh, to operate out of the spiritual into the natural then you know you need to just soak in these truths that Paul is um, uh, teaching us here and also look at the truths in God's word because the truth alone can set us free. Amen. Okay, thank you for joining class. Anyone has any questions? Thank you, Abhishek and Rupa for your wishes. Thank you, Asha, Kung and Siddharth. Okay, if there's no questions, then um, I'll see you all on Friday. And uh, please read uh, Romans and please live in the truth and walk in the truth. Um, and let the truth set you free. Okay? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to avoid it, Kung, but I can't. I have to come. It's quite a long travel now. One, and one hour, 15 minutes from my place, and uh, plus. Um, okay, let me just end class and then speak to you, Kung. Okay, stop recording.